friends, and welcome to Screen Vomit, the number one podcast about movies for normal people. <laughs> I'm your host, Kayla. Here with me is my twin, Kali J. Hey, quack, quack, baby. <laughs> Literally say the same line at the top of every episode, and yet goofed it. <laughs> I goofed it? No, I did. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I goofed the tag. Oh, yeah, you did. Yeah, you did a little. <laughs> it's cool. Folks, I haven't spoken out loud in five days, and I'm scratchy. <laughs> oh. Scratchy sounds cool, though. You think so? I don't know. I think some people have, like, a thing about it. I know, like, there's a podcast I listen to with a, a woman on it, and she's always talking about people are at, acting her for her scratchy thing. Scratchy voice? Yeah. I don't yeah. know. But then, like, I don't know. You ever listen to, like, Lindsay Lohan? Like, she sounds cool. <laughs> yeah. I think scratchy voices sound nice. <laughs> well, hopefully, uh, hopefully, normal people think that uh, scratchy voices sound nice because guess what? That's what you're getting today, <laughs> <laughs> and probably most days until Pandy's over. <laughs> Hell yeah! Um, all right, uh, what movie do we? Oh, we, okay. So movies. I know that's what I was about to say. Um, okay, so this week we watched. First of all, the 2013 bromance film Prince Avalanche. And yeah. this movie is a remake of a 2011 Icelandic film called Either Way. And because they're both within our parameters, we both watched both of them. <laughs> yeah. And so we thought it would be kind of fun to do a sort of side by side comparing and contrasting of the two maybe still with a focus on prince avalanche because that one's more accessible but i think it will uh be pretty fun to I think compare them be fun yeah yeah i think you watched it prince avalanche either way yeah. i watched either way prince avalanche uh-huh i don't know if it was this way for you but at the start i'm just like noticing every difference and really like taking this was a really fun side but like to watch it was. Both of these. It really was a fun side by side. Um, also, I want to say for the normals, uh, the Icelandic version, either way, is kind of hard to find in the U.S. at least. But if you are interested in watching it, you can DM us on our socials or email us at screenvomitpod at gmail dot com. I have a link, so I can hook you up with a link if you would like. Got a link? Yeah, I have a link. Prince Avalanche is on Netflix. Is that where we watched it? <laughs> Amazon. <laughs> okay, Prince Avalanche is on <laughs> Amazon. But either way, the film either way. <laughs> DM for Linky, uh, and we can hook you up. So anyway, Kali picked Prince Avalanche. Do you want to say why? Yeah. Is there a reason why? It'd been on my list for a while. I I don't think I'd ever seen a trailer for this movie. I just mm-hmm. saw the cover. Just right. Paul Rudd like in an over in overalls with like Emil Hirsch to the side. And I was like, oh, Paul Rudd mustache overalls, you know, sure. With like the, um, what's the font called? Like the very indie movie from 2011 uh, font. <laughs> yes, kind of. Yeah, I don't love it in hindsight, but it is what it is. <laughs> yeah, uh, so, so the poster was enticing to you. That's fair enough. I never saw a trailer for it either. Yeah, I like Paul Rudd, yeah. generally speaking. Mm-hmm. Um. I can't think of anything I don't like him in. Like, if he's in a movie, I generally like him. Sure. Yeah, that's all. I can think of movies that he's in that I don't like, but it's not him that I don't oh, like yeah. in it. Yeah. Bingo. <laughs> okay, so running through the cast, we kind of have spilled a little bit of beans. Uh, this is directed by slash adapted by David Gordon Green, who is uh, the person who directed Pineapple Express. He's in some other movies, too, but that's, I think, oh, yeah. the biggest one. What? He's got a very interesting filmography. <laughs> he did The Sitter? Really? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's just like, oh, that movie's like pretty good. Like He does good or bad movies very distinctly, I think. I don't uh, think there were any movies on his list that I loved. What's, what's a movie you would say that he did that's good? He did the 2018 Halloween movie. Oh, really? Yeah, with oh, Jamie okay. Lee Curtis. Yeah. I thought that, I don't know if I thought that was like amazing, but I thought it was fine. It was a fine film. Good movies. I'd say he does fine to bad films. (laughs) Nothing spectacular. I really liked Halloween. Uh, I like Pineapple Express well Mm -hmm. enough. And you know what? I like this. Yeah. So 
Yeah. I thought Pineapple Express was fine. I think it's just not really my thing because it's like a weed movie, right? Yeah. Yeah. And weed, not my thing. Uh, yeah. So I don't know. It's probably fine. I also, I watch it in theaters. I've never seen it again. So who knows? That was like 15 years ago. <laughs> I watched it recently, and I tell you what, I just really fucking, I really like Danny McBride. Yeah, Uh, I do like Danny McBride. I I really enjoy his shit. Yeah. Anyway, Danny McBride not in this movie. No, but who is in this movie is Paul Rudd, who we mentioned, uh, Emile Hirsch, who was in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, which we've done on pod. He's also Mm -hmm. probably most famously known for being in Into the Wild. Okay, and then... Uh, one more. The old man in this movie is played by Lance Legault. Legault? I guess I don't know if that's how you say it. Lance Legault. Uh-huh. He has been acting since the 60s, and he was the stunt double for Elvis Presley. He's also been cool. in like every big show that was around in like the 70s, 80s, like Magnum P.I. Yeah. He was on the A-Team, uh, all kinds of stuff. And uh, R.I.P., he died a few months after this movie was shot. So R.I.P. old man. And then lastly, the music in this film is composed by the band Explosions in the Sky. So that's it for cast. What's our critic scores? Critic scores looking pretty good. Yeah. Rotten Tomatoes, we got an 82%. Sort of of fine, I believe. Sort of fine. Cricket, we got got 73%. Okay, a little worse. Cricket. (laughs) And our wildcard babies, Google users, Mm -hmm. we got 81% for them. All right. So, yeah, all in all... Around the same Good. area. All right, so let's watch the trailer and then we'll get into it. Boom. Okay, so just a teaser. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. That's good. It's a little short baby. <laughs> there should be a hella one minute and 11 second cap on trailers. Because that was nice, right? <laughs> yeah. Figure out that how to sell you... me in a minute or fuck off. Yeah. It sells you on its strengths. <laughs> hey, don't you think Paul Rudd is like kind of charming and goofy? Uh, and he's, hey, it's an odd couple dynamic of some kind. Yeah. Like, Are you a boy and you like boy movies? <laughs> ooh. <laughs> ding, ding. <laughs> my, my ears are burning. <laughs> well, have we got the uh, thing for you. <laughs> I'm a sucker for boy movies. I know you are. <laughs> a yeah, boy who loves boys. I am. <laughs> yeah, I'm a boy lover. What can I say? <laughs> nope. Bleep that. Bleep that. <laughs> nope. <laughs> that one's staying in. <laughs> I hope someone clips the audio for that. <laughs> That's okay. going to be great. Well, live and learn. <laughs> Keep moving on, you know? <laughs> okay, so I have like a little bit of setup for this one. A little bit of history, because this starts with a short little piece about 1987 wildfires in Texas. So in September of 2011, as we said, this movie came out in 2013. Yeah. There was a crazy wildfire in Texas in Bastrop County, uh, which is just east of Austin, that was Mm -hmm. the highest number of homes lost in a single fire in Texas history. Ah, fuck. Yeah. So real crazy wildfire. Um, the director, David Gordon Green, lives in Austin, so he lives not too far from where those fires took place, okay. and he kind of stumbled across this burnt-up land, basically, and was like, uh, yo, I gotta make a movie here. <laughs> this yeah. is the spot. And his friend told him to remake the Icelandic film. Either way, he agreed without even seeing it. The hell yeah. <laughs> and fast-tracked this remake to completion. (laughs) He said, we had the idea in February of 2012. We were filming by May and sound mixing in July. And then it came out. Oh my God. 2013. Yeah. So like very fucking fast. (laughs) That's great. This movie doesn't feel shoddily done. Nothing production wise felt rushed or like Hmm. lacking to me. You're, you're, you're not, you've got to pause. (laughs) All right. Uh, well, overall, I'd say yeah. I agree, but I do have some pieces of it that I have thoughts about, but we can get sure. to that when it comes. But I think quality wise, sure. I agree. Yeah. Quality wise, I yeah. think, uh, yeah, it doesn't feel rushed. It's it still looks like, you know, looks good. Yeah. It looks fine. Yeah. 
it's a pretty close rip overall. So oh yeah, like most of the script was there already. So like that line for line in some se- in some scenes, scenes yeah. yeah, yeah. And then just another note on the title. So the title, like we said, to the original film is called Either Way, and mm-hmm. this is called Prince Avalanche. So it's kind of like. Where the fuck did this title come from? Prince Avalanche. It's never said in the film. <laughs> nope. Um, the word prince is. One time and that's it. Um, yep. So he said that the title came to him in a dream from a misunderstanding that he had in his dream. Someone was being referred to as Prince Avalanche and he woke up thinking that would be a cool title for a movie. <laughs> he said, this is a quote. Doesn't really make any sense for the movie, but it had good architecture and good cadence to it. So it literally has nothing to do with anything. (laughs) All right. I tell you what, this is going to be a really fun episode to record because all of these, that decision, that's amazing. That's sound fucking logic to me. I'm like, hell yeah. Yeah. That sounds tight as hell. Prince Avalanche is a badass name. But I cannot remember the name to this movie. I had to look it up a hundred times because it has no connection to anything. I cannot remember the name. Stuck with me. I don't know. Yeah. (laughs) Maybe. And I (laughs) just, I I need to have a a button to say this the rest of the time. It's just a thing about the guys. It's a guy thing. (laughs) <laughs> it's like pepsi you remember remember when dr pepper put out that soda that was like just 10 calories and it was like it's just for guys no i don't remember you that. remember that no okay that was an insane thing that ha- did happen uh, <laughs> was dr pepper put out uh, a soda just for men point being you like boy stuff you're just reiterating the point. boys 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 yeah <laughs> So this movie is set in 1988. The original just said 1980 something. Yeah. We've got two boys, you know, as we said, boy movie, out camping. And you know what? It turns out we've accidentally watched two movies about boys in nature in a row, right? (laughs) Because we just did did Ornithologist. (laughs) Yeah, you know, we did. (laughs) We've been on a boy movie kick. We got to do a... non-boy movie next week we do we do but i tell you what look at (laughs) can we get at least one girl in the cast (laughs) hey there are there's a woman in this barely (laughs) may or may not be real but she's there (laughs) all right one thing i loved about their camping setup i just think it needs to be mentioned is that they had the world's tiniest collapsible lawn chairs that were so funny <laughs> did you notice the lawn chairs no i thought they they were <laughs> tiny I they're didn't so see small them at all. <laughs> they're so small they're like baby chairs <laughs> so we got two guys we got paul rudd who's the quote-unquote older guy uh and then we got emil hirsch who is the quote-unquote younger guy they don't say yeah. their ages in this one, but in the original, they say 24 and 33, but they act like they're a world of difference, so. <laughs> yeah, in both <laughs> movies, I must have missed, I saw 24, I never. I don't remember seeing 33 for the older guy in either way. Mm-hmm. Like, I assume both he and Paul Rudd were like 38 or something. Yeah, they say 33 in the original. It doesn't matter that much. Ultimately, no. <laughs> Yeah. Probably not. <laughs> we kind of said the the very opening of this film and the original are almost identical. They both yeah. open with a tea kettle going off. These guys are what do you call them? Road workers. Like their job is that yeah, they paint they like, lines on the road and like put in the poles on the sides of the road and stuff like that. That's it. Yeah. And in both films, they introduce the opening, the title screen by when they're hammering a post. One mm. letter of the title comes in with each hammer or whatever. But they did that in both films. It was cool. Yeah. I kind of liked how identical they were at the beginning. These these were a really fun yeah. pair to watch back to back. Yeah. What I appreciated was like anytime you remake something, you have to obviously kind of justify why mm-hmm. by tweaking it 
or, you know, in this case, I'd say almost kind of Americanizing it mm-hmm. uh, in a lot of ways. But or also, even just making it accessible in America because the yeah. Icelandic version is not really. Holy shit. I checked on Letterboxd because I'm curious. Only 211 people have seen have stated they've seen this. Prince Avalanche? No, either way. Mm, yeah, because uh, it's not, not accessible. Yeah. Because in America, it doesn't exist. Like, I found a deep... <laughs> Okay, I went deep uh, and found a Vimeo yeah. a Vimeo link that has an alternate score on it. And that's the only way I could find to watch it, unless you, like, buy the DVD. But even then, like, the mm-hmm. DVD didn't come up in searches. Um, it only came up when I actually pulled up Amazon <laughs> and, like, typed it into yeah, Amazon, yeah. when usually it would come up just searching it, you know? Sure. So, yeah, it's, it's weirdly inaccessible. And I don't know if that's, like, because I don't feel like I've really seen other Icelandic films, so... I don't know if that's like something with their distribution or uh, or what. Yeah, I feel like this is probably my first Icelandic film too. And I watch a fair amount of foreign films, so yeah, I don't know. There's something to it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, <laughs> but uh, no, I, I feel the point of what I was getting at. I feel it is different enough to justify its fine. I think it's a good remake. I think it's good that it was remade by David Allen Green. They complement each other really well. Like we've been saying, it was just fun to watch these two together. Yeah, it was fun to watch these two together. I almost think of them, even though a lot of the lines are line for line, a lot of the scenes are, you know, the same action happening, even when there's not lines. I almost feel like they're two different movies. Like they don't tonally feel the same at all. Um, They don't atmospherically feel the same at all. Yeah, in that way, it's also... Maybe what makes it fun to watch back to back as well, because of how differently they're interpreted. They really are. Like, yeah. down to shot composition. I so appreciated it. that it was not like shot for shot at all, but it was still. It was shot for shot in some parts, but even when mm-hmm. it was, like, it was still different enough. It felt different. Yeah. 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 I guess if we're going to start with the differences, um, Something we could talk about was the casting of the two movies, because I feel like the vibes between the two guys are so different. Absolutely. As far as casting goes. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that? I really connected to the younger guy in the Icelandic one. Mm -hmm. The older guy, I couldn't really. And I, I, I tried to suss this out if I was like, is this a language thing? Because I couldn't get any emotion in any of his line reads. Really? Not that much and it just kind of like felt monotonous when he would talk and un like i should caveat this there are scenes where i was like oh yeah yeah yeah." so like he he knows what he's doing but i'm not feeling it the rest of the time throughout the film the struggles he goes through and experiences and the growth i really felt and this makes me sound like a dumb american but like i felt more accessible to the emotional beats in Prince Avalanche. Mm. I think that I feel the opposite. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. I once I saw your Letterboxd reviews, I was like, ah, shit. It's going to be a, f- a flippy doodah one, huh? I felt like the older man actor in the Icelandic film, to me, uh-huh. seemed a lot more authentic to the role. He seemed like he was that part. Like, he really seemed meant for that part to me. Whereas sure. Paul Rudd, I feel like, as much as I love Paul Rudd, mm-hmm. I don't feel like this character was him. He's just a little too, like, clean city boy looking. <laughs> I don't sure. Know. For the part, even, like, I saw a review being like, oh, he's sporting this gritty mustache for this movie. But, like, <laughs> even his mustache is, like, properly trimmed, you know? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. he's wearing clothes that are, like, form-fitting. Like, he just doesn't seem totally. gritty enough to be, like, a road worker who lives in the woods half the year. You know what I mean? Sure. I just no, didn't I... feel like that was authentic to him. And I did feel like it was to the guy in the Icelandic film. I will. Yeah. You know what? I'll concede that actually. The Icelandic guy absolutely inhabited that aspect of the character better. I think the difference in my ability to really empathize well came in the more emotional beats. Mm-hmm. But yes, I totally agree with you that the Icelandic dude better inhabits those aspects of the older guy. I also feel like if you're going to bring up the emotional beats, I feel like the, mm, I have notes in here, but they're like down the line. 
Maybe sure. I'll pause on the emotional beats and get to it when they come up my notes. It's all right. Do you, I, I am, I'm free and loose if you want to just kind of okay. go through your notes chronologically. Yeah, we can keep going. Okay. So these guys are odd couple. It's like so obvious. Yep. The younger guy is Paul Rudd's character's girlfriend's brother. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Girlfriend's brother working with him out there. They're meant to be camping in the woods for like all summer, like three months or something. Yeah. Working on roads. Never heard of road crews working like this, but yeah. Uh, I don't know a lot about road crews. Yeah, I and guess. pretty sure it's illegal to just set up camp like anywhere. <laughs> so it must have been an '80s thing. <laughs> but it's like remote. Texas like there's uh that's even worse you know all that property is private property and some guy's gonna come out there with a shotgun if you're out there now <laughs> oh hell yeah yeah nowadays <laughs> with some sure. ar-15s or whatever the fuck <laughs> yeah so speaking of these two guys we got to talk about their costumes <sighs> This was something I did not like because okay. their costumes were deliberately designed to be Mario and Luigi uh, so they both <laughs> <laughs> deliberate like it's literally what yeah, they were going for yeah. <laughs> they got big blue overalls one of them's got a red shirt and one of them's got a green shirt um the director said he thought it would be funny that's a direct yeah, quote actually <laughs> oh my god outstanding <laughs> that's dumb as hell i love it it is a stupid decision it is just like <laughs> yeah it's very dumb and it's just two sides of the coin here folks I, I think that's hilarious, <laughs> and that rocks to just do big, dumb decisions like that. Another goofy thing that they changed and made goofy for this film was naming Paul Rudd's character Alvin, and then having uh, Emile Hirsch's character do the Alvin and the Chipmunks <laughs> Alvin scream. The Alvin! You know? Yeah, yeah. That was corny. I think that was corny. (laughs) That was so corny. (laughs) Uh, I had fun. I felt like, I don't know, this movie was like, it's not a fully serious movie, the original or the remake. You know, there's comedy to both of them, but I feel like the quote unquote comedy that um, David Gordon Green added to his film, to me, felt kind of impulsive and felt like it comes from a guy with an underdeveloped sense of humor <laughs> like okay. they're like hell yeah baby brain yeah. jokes added to a much smarter script i think the script is too smart for these like goofball jokes in my opinion cool. but you don't agree yeah. <laughs> yeah no i don't agree with that at all i don't think <laughs> the script was like terribly smart i didn't feel the icelandic movie anchored me in its dialogue mm. i felt incredibly anchored by the setting Far more than Prince Avalanche. And the Prince Avalanche setting is very cool. But a huge difference between these two movies are, how I remember it, the way dialogue scenes are shot. In Prince Avalanche, they're pretty close shots. They're like close shots that show the full body of the person. Even when you're in an enclosed space, like in a truck or something, you're seeing most of the person's face. Mm -hmm. And either way, it's a lot of wide shots. You see a lot of this like really desolate, but still kind of gorgeous landscape behind it and it creates at least for me kind of a more haunting and more it it just creates such a different feel the landscape in the original is much more a part of the story than the landscape in the remake so absolutely i think in in a lot of ways it almost contrasts how intense and emotional they get over every little thing happening to them Mm mm-hmm by being such a like cold, barren land, like it's such an uncaring, un- unwarm land, that place where they yeah. are in Iceland. So having that fill up so much of the frame and be so barren when everything that the guys are, are going through is so like highly emotional, mm-hmm. I think it's a cool contrast that's happening there. And you don't get that in Prince Avalanche at all. No, I, I thought about this while I was watching it. Like you do lose out on that, the acknowledgement at least of the environment. You don't even uh, hardly the experience the nature of where they are in the remake at all. I mean, even like- a couple. Even the one time, like, one of them lays down on the ground, he lays in the road. He lays in the pavement in the middle of the road. He doesn't even lay in the grass. 
<laughs> and like there's a couple shots of him like hanging out in nature and camping and uh like walking through trees and fishing but yeah, yeah it is not anywhere near as engaged with its environment as either way right uh, but where i felt that environment kind of dip i felt compensated for by creating a deeper like empathetic connection with these characters i really was able to believe their reactions what was going on the way they handled things the way they you know failed to cope with things uh i i felt like i was really there with them because while i was watching either way you know i could feel that cold like unforgiveness but i didn't feel the same you know like you can call this like and and, like it is cheesy or whatever but also who gives a fuck if it's cheesy cheesy things are very nice sometimes like i didn't feel that warmth of camaraderie in either way the same way i did in prince avalanche Mm -hmm. um but you didn't think that the camaraderie that they end up with in prince avalanche is a little i thought it was kind of corny and forced like (laughs) it went at the end and he's like oh you're not as dumb as people think you are it's like okay did a first grader write this like this is just it's just corny it didn't feel like it held that much emotional weight to me i felt like the original was much more emotionally authentic even Hmm. i mean we'll get to it also but like in prince avalanche they're like physically fighting with each other all the time that just felt like forced and corny to me it felt fun to me (laughs) yeah it doesn't feel authentic to me it doesn't feel grounded it just feels kind of silly where Mm -hmm. i mean i felt like the original either Either way way. was was much more grounded emotionally and much more real in my opinion (laughs) hell yeah (laughs) we have the opposite (laughs) complete opposite this rules i also think just when we're talking about how much space the nature of it all takes up in each movie was a wild juxtaposition after just watching ornithologist too Mm -hmm. when we talked about in that episode how they tried to give equal screen time to people and to nature I think watching that back-to-back with Prince Avalanche Mm -hmm. really exacerbates how strongly they went for that in Ornithologist as well. Like, it just really makes it stand out how much much work they put into the focus on the nature because it's just so non-existent in Prince Avalanche. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I'll disagree with you. I think it was... I wouldn't say it's extinct or anything. Maybe not say it's non existent but... might be a strong word, but it's just yeah. There's such in a comparison though, yes. To absolutely. The two ends of a spectrum <laughs> in comparison. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought like I said, like I thought about that and I was like, so what like what's the point of the environment? And yeah, Prince of Avalanche is not a perfect movie. It mm-hmm. has its imperfections and its la its failure to really use that environment. Which when you do get those shots of like charred trees Mm -hmm. or there's like, fuck, at the end of the movie, they have a montage of lumberjacks just mowing down trees with chainsaws. That's engaging. And it's very personal. Like it's up close. But it's two seconds like right before we roll creds. Like (laughs) exactly. (laughs) That should have been more a part of the movie. Yeah. Yeah. Like there's this chance to like almost like grasp onto an even bigger theme that I think they almost they kind of shoot for they miss though of and this i don't want this to sound corny because but it you know what fuck it it is corny but i like corny <laughs> things um the americanism quote unquote like good mm. hard-working white male just working hard and experiencing emotions like yeah. i felt like that's a very classic tried and true story you know that's pretty much every fucking movie from uh it's pretty still pretty much every fucking movie coming out (laughs) uh (laughs) men are still trying to figure out how to feel emotions in this day and age yeah and and have a friend (laughs) yeah it's pretty much the exact same thing that every single movie is we just can't get it right (laughs) one of these days I don't think so. <laughs> Not on my watch. <laughs> yeah, but I, I was thinking of camaraderie through labor, through like putting in mm. a hard day's work and working alongside they someone. They could have been talking about don't... their unions. <laughs> well, of course, we could. What? Could this be a union movie? Absolutely. But solely just through like, yeah. make, on the 
basis of like you make friends at work sure and like the the things that happen at work it could have really said something about that but it just kind of was there and like flopped around yeah i don't know it, it really felt like a missed opportunity i kind of feel like this director doesn't think that deeply about mm, anything no 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 <laughs> i don't i don't think it went that i'm not deep. sure he's capable of creating a lot of subtext but the opportunities were there <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, i do also while we're talking about the environment i think it's kind of silly that he was so inspired by this specific environment that he was like so moved to make a movie in right? this area and then did not show the environment at all yeah it's <laughs> When you said that, I was just like, you've got to be fucking kidding me. Like, yeah. how did you not show it more then? Yeah. I don't get it. Yeah. So we're jumping all over, but I'm kind of into it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't even know where to go in the story from here. I mean, everything seems inconsequential to the larger aspects that we've been talking about. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought it was kind of funny. Both movies did this, had the jacking off in the tent scene when the older man rolls over and, and they touch pots. <laughs> I tell you what, uh, uh, I don't know if I want to keep the. Well, fuck. I'll just. I don't. I don't care. Oh, yeah. No. Is this as gonna someone be a jacking who, off story. <laughs> uh, kind of. I'm just saying, like <laughs> that is a thing that does indeed happen when you are like camping with guys. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. One hundred percent of the time. Gross. That I have. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Golly. And I. And, and what more would have? No, not that I've done it. Golly. <laughs> but I I don't say every time I go camping, I, I crank my hog. Ew. But like, look, mm-hmm. it is terrible. It's the worst thing in the world. <laughs> I'm not trying to say like, oh, it happens to everyone. It's normal. It's like, no, <laughs> guys, this is a guy's PSA. <laughs> we should all really stop jerking off when we know someone else is in a room with us. It's not kosher. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I wouldn't know about that, but that's a good shout out to the guys. <laughs> yeah. This younger boy is a super horny young boy. <laughs> he he is single-minded focused. <laughs> In the original, there's an additional scene of the, I'm calling him a boy and talking about him cranking hog and calling him a boy at the same time seems wrong. He is in his 20s. He's a... 24 in both movies. Technically a man. (laughs) Although that seems like a young boy to me. But anyway, so there's an additional scene in the original where he is uh, doing the deed outside to completion. I don't think they have that in the remake, right? Oh, they did not. (laughs) You know what? I'm just now remembering it. I didn't... (laughs) It just kind of uh, reinforces the narrative that he's a horny little freak. When in the remake, we only see him jerk it one time. Yeah. And not know. even to completion. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's American censorship right there. That's American culture. American yeah. movies, very, I don't even probably think. True. And 2013 really weren't you know, ready to true. deal with that. I was thinking one of the first quote unquote foreign films I think I ever watched in my life is an Irish mm-hmm. film called Angela's Ashes based on a book. Oh, yeah. I know Angela's You've Ashes. You've seen it? Uh, my mom read the book a ton yes. like it was a huge deal in my household for Ugh. a while he has like three books in that series they're all very good the movie's also very yeah. good that was like probably one of my first like favorite movies but there mm-hmm. is a circle jerk scene <laughs> in it and i just gotta think i've never seen anything quite like that uh from american cinema not that jerk off scenes don't exist but that was like a major motion picture yeah and they did a circle jerk <laughs> That rocks. That does actually <laughs> like, really rule, <laughs> fucking rule. Teen boys. <laughs> it's no wonder my mom never did let me read. I was really young, so I never really was into yeah. it. But if I, I was watching it in it. like middle school or high school, you would have been a, practically a baby. <laughs> yeah. So too young for that. Uh, yeah. You got to watch it one day, though. <laughs> anyway, w- what was I saying? In the original, when he's talking about how he wants to go out on the weekend to, you know, take care of business, mm-hmm. <laughs> he says he wants to get the little man squeezed. <laughs> Disgusting. Don't say that. That was... I thought that was funny. Not a fan. <laughs> when they're talking to each other about what they're doing for the weekend, so, like, obviously we said the younger man's going to get his little man squeezed. The older man is saying, like, 
I reap the rewards of solitude. In the remake, he says, I have a lot of prescription medications and I try not to use them. It's like, uh, what? (laughs) What is that about? (laughs) What are these prescriptions? Yeah, that was really... Just thrown in there. (laughs) I was trying to figure that one out. I tell you what, the only one I could get to that made sense was... If it was, like, something that could be used recreationally, in a way. I don't know. Because he says he just tries not to use them, right? He tries to, like... Yeah. It's If you have, like, an antidepressant... And remember, you know, we're it, in the 80s here, so... Exactly, yeah. yeah. Whatever basic antidepressant, anti, like... I'm just saying, not even a lot of people were even being prescribed antidepressants at this time. No, but, like... That was the only thing I could think of was if it was like, especially combined with later when we do see him take a pill, he just like kind of chills out in a hammock afterwards. I was like, (laughs) you know, in the 90s, my mom stopped taking me to a babysitter because she found out my babysitter was on Prozac in the 90s. (laughs) So, I mean, it would have been early 90s, but. Oh, my God. Okay. I can't wait to be a father for a lot of reasons, but (laughs) one of the big ones is... I, I can't wait to talk to, like, a babysitter someday and just see her, like, have, like, a little pill caddy. Yeah. Just be like, pills, huh? Not not with my child. Get the hell out of here. You just really excited to fire some babysitters? <laughs> yeah. I want to crush 13-year-old's dreams. I'll tell you, based on experience, I just can't recommend that anyone ever send their child to a babysitter. <laughs> I have been to so many absolutely terrible babysitters. Man, I hated being a a kid. I remember <laughs> like being like three or four and being like uh, not not that young because you barely are aware of yourself, but being like I don't know five, six, seven, and just being aware that I couldn't go anywhere without my mom taking me there first. Mm. It really made me feel small. See, when I was those ages. I was mostly locked out of the house most of the day. (laughs) Oh, my God. Such a different fucking. (laughs) My mom would be like, you're not allowed to come back inside until it's dark. Do not come home (laughs) and lock the door. I'm like, oh, my God, Mom. Why the fuck are you taking me to Pier 1 again? (laughs) I started staying home by myself since I was eight. Because my parents just, like, worked too much. They were like, you can figure Mm -hmm. it out. (laughs) You'll be fine. (laughs) And I had so many terrible babysitters that we finally gave up on it. (laughs) By the time I was eight years old. (laughs) That's a little young. Yeah. I don't know. When do you think a kid, I'd probably say 11, 12, they're good to... Well, my brother, my little brother, who's five years younger than me, he stayed in daycare until he was probably, like, 12 or 13 Mm -hmm. so maybe it's like case by case i always was kind of like a more independent everything is kid anyway i was the older Mm -hmm. one so i didn't really get babied i didn't have like i don't know (laughs) how far we want to get into it (laughs) you my brother let's just say my me and my brother have different dads and he had one who cared about him um so like i was a lot less babied growing up you adapted to your situation yeah yeah so Anyway, I was a little more mature for my age, I guess, uh, by then. I was more able to take care of myself. Anyway. So how did we get here? <laughs> We've been all over. We, we're, we, we're off the GD rails. <laughs> we watched two movies, and we all we did was fight about it for the first hour, and now we're exhausted. <laughs> and we just and want to talk about talked, our childhoods. <laughs> I haven't talked to anyone in a week. Um, so I'm feeling a little spilly. (laughs) Yeah. All right. Well, what's up, normals? (laughs) How are y'all doing? (laughs) Okay. So Lance goes away for the weekend. In the remake, we have a whole thing with Paul Rudd uh, having his little solo weekend montage. In the original, there, there is no such montage. Not at all. That does scene does not exist. So everything that happens in Paul Rudd's montage was improvised. Oh. First, we meet this woman, played by Joyce Payne, who is mm-hmm. digging through the ashes of her burned down house. She actually is a real woman who was digging mm-hmm. through the ashes of her real burned down house. Oh, my God. They just went there for location to just 
we're mm-hmm. gonna get like some b-roll or whatever of scouting just yeah. the, the ashes and she was there and they were just chatting with her and um she told them she didn't know how to act but they were like mm-hmm. just say on camera what you've been telling us and that's what she did she talked about how she felt really bad that she lost her flight log book because it had such history for her and in a Q&A someone asked her how she prepared for her part and she said what you saw was real it wasn't acting it was really just her telling her story i adored like, that scene yeah pretty intense and really happenstance for them yeah really just lightning in a bottle just it felt like that it absolutely yeah just felt like she's right it, it, she's just talking they're just filming you know it's documentary at that point yeah. for her she's just telling us what happened and it is you know like probably like one of the best scenes in the movie <laughs> yeah and yeah. like so many fucking like it's just a story of loss like literally anyone mm-hmm. can relate to it yeah we've all lost something at some point yeah and then after that we get um paul rudd losing his damn mind alone when he went to his like whole fake house he made with random junk that was cool <laughs> super talking to himself like talking to an imaginary girlfriend in the house <laughs> it felt very um quarantine vibes i had no idea i was just like okay Sure. Yeah, that was all improv on his part, sure. <laughs> just goofing around. I mean, I read that as, and, and this is probably me, because I, you know, when I when I say I like this movie, I am willing to, like, add, like, I like Paul Rudd. I like movies that try to be earnest, you know, hey, let's just get along, and mm-hmm. I like two guys on the road. Sure. I, like, I tell you what, <laughs> I like two people on the road. You give me two people on the road. But especially if they're guys. Especially, but Thelma and Louise... That's mm, like a yeah. top tier. That's like the best road movie ever. Sure. So like there are some things that I was just going to naturally be inclined to it. But I re- I just read this scene as like, he's a goddamn simp. What's he's a simp? simp for this. Uh, a simp, it, what does it stand for? You're, it's it's crass. It's uh, internet speak for something in service of mediocre. So like going overboard for someone who doesn't even like you that much or isn't even aware of you. Something something for mediocre pussy is the uh, acronym. I told you it was crass. So I'm just del- I'm the messenger. What are you saying he's doing that for? He misses his wife so much, and he is so oh, like, okay. oh my god, like <laughs> I am, yabba dabba do, get me back to her because mm. I'm, you know, this is what the life I could have if only there's. And that's I think this is another kind of shortcoming of the movie. I never totally understand what's keeping him in the remote job position. I think he likes it. It's like his letter at the beginning is kind of, what was he saying stuff like, we barely even, we haven't even addressed his girlfriend at all, but um, they're long distance while he's out here. And he says like in a letter to her at the beginning, something along the lines of like, I'm really glad to be out of the city. I lose my mind in the city and I'm kind of feeling a lot better out here. I've collected my thoughts kind of stuff. Okay. Yep. Never mind. I was just forgetting things. They absolutely do justify why he likes being outside at the job. I think he just kind of likes it. (laughs) <laughs> yeah so he puts up with the sacrifice that he has on his relationship yeah the vibe you would get from the letters you know he, he he's read the letter from his girlfriend a hundred times he does seem to be like super in love with his girlfriend or whatever it's it seems to be unbalanced and that's reinforced mm. especially with while talking to the brother the brother kind of implies like that she's had sex with someone that Uh, Paul Rudd doesn't know about in the past. Yeah. So there's kind of some seeds of doubt planted there of like, and I had, of course, either way to guide me through Prince Avalanche. So I had known. Mm -hmm. And that's something I think either way does better too, was the, I don't know, just the explanation. The, I don't know, the letters. In either way, they go more into that he's never had another relationship. So this is like- His first time being in love, his first real relationship. They definitely focus more on it, yeah. Yeah, so that's like, once you know that, I feel like it makes a lot more sense why he's so like, this is going to work out, and I am in love, and love works, obviously, you know, like, because if you've never had your heart broken by somebody you thought you were going to be with for a long time, then you probably would be that hopeful about it. (laughs) Yeah, but yeah, I I think there's even just down to either way has a a scene where 
we straight up just hear a letter. We do. We're almost to the letter. Should I get us to the letter? Get us to the letter. That's the big yeah, point. Yeah, I know, because we're talking around it. <laughs> we should get yeah. there. So the boy comes back from his weekend away. He seems a little fucked up. He's in a lab coat now. He has a new watch. He's like... <laughs> <laughs> Loved it. <laughs> Truly goofing. <laughs> and yeah, so he seems like he has some kind of story that happened to him over the weekend, but it takes a little bit to get it out of him. And I did like the like running bit throughout both movies where every time one of them is having an emotion, they say like, can't we just enjoy the silence a little bit so that they don't yep. have to talk about their emotions? <laughs> Another W for the boys. <laughs> yeah, that felt very boy movie to me. <laughs> We got no idea what we're doing Yeah, <laughs> with our so, little tiny stupid brains. When he finally tells his weekend story, he says he fell asleep standing up in the kitchen <laughs> uh, and at some point got punched in the face by the girl he was after's ex. And all he wanted was to get laid and he didn't get laid. Poor little fellow, bless his heart. We've <laughs> all been there. <laughs> So when he comes back from his weekend is when he brings the letter from his sister to Paul or, you know, both cases. Yeah, yeah. It's handled differently in both movies. So he ends up when he wakes up the next day after the older guy has read the letter, the older guy is gone. And so Mm -hmm. he goes snooping and reads the letter. And in the original, the girl voiceovers the breakup letter so she's kind of reading it while he's reading it um yeah in the remake we don't get that so you can see a little bit of the words like in the shot yeah but, like not really and so you're still kind of like i don't exactly know what happened i guess they broke up kind of thing not not a great ex like a really easy thing i think like Yeah, keep the voiceover in. Yeah. But just keep it in. So what they did do in the remake is instead of playing that letter, what we find out is that the older man has gone. He's gone because he went to call her. So what they do in the remake is play the call recording, but only sort of. They play it over like B-roll driving footage, like road footage. And yeah. it's there's also a lot of like soundtrack going on at that time too. So not only is it like phone call quality, but then it's like playing at the same time as like really loud music. So even then, like you can barely understand what she's saying. You get the point of it, I think, but I don't know. That whole the way they did that, I didn't really like and to me it kind of felt just Everything that's happening visually and audio, like sonically, I guess, felt kind of like high school film. Like I literally (laughs) was in a film in high school that did that same thing. (laughs) Um, You mean it had badass special effects? (laughs) FX? When he comes back too, like when it does show him on screen again, Mm -hmm. on screen, like writes, I love you so much in the remake, like Mm -hmm. on the screen. What is yeah, that? Yeah, that was what corny. That about? That was I'll concede the, that. That whole entire thing was so corny. A lot of the ways that they changed this movie just made it corny. <laughs> I think yeah. all the changes they made pretty much were corny and took away from the real emotional depth of whatever was happening. Just It was cheesy. Yep. I, I didn't love this part. No. Yeah. But what we glean is that she's into another guy. And she's mm-hmm. dumping him is basically what we get from the letter. And of course, Icelandic movie did this part better. Just yeah, definitely. Straight movies always have cheating. So <laughs> we love it. Well, it's the only <laughs> issue, and it's like, yeah, there's literally no other issue. It's just that one. The thing about monogamy <laughs> is you can never talk about it with your partner. Yeah, at least in straight culture, mm-hmm. it's like if you it's if you do, you turn to stone. Um, <laughs> It's just you can't discuss like, <laughs> yeah, like the challenges that that might come with monogamy because it's a forced concept uh, or it's well kind of a forced concept uh, if you're born in Western world. And so the only issue that comes out of that is, of course, cheating, especially to straight guys uh, mm-hmm. who are insecure. And this movie is all about insecure straight white guys mm-hmm. to like definitely to a fault at some I think also in in straight culture you're not allowed to talk about your feelings in general with each other yeah fuck that that much because like if this woman was unhappy in their relationship 
which she clearly was. She's not happy with being left alone with her child for months on end at home alone. No. You know, she could have just dumped him for that. Like, there doesn't even need to be another guy involved if she's just not happy. But got to be cheating. <laughs> yeah, got to be. I, I don't care. I don't mind it. It, it just <laughs> Things like that just kind of wash over me. And I'm like, all right, yeah. cheating. I just, I don't know why it's, I just feel like every romantic thing I've seen in the last year, every single time, there's cheating. There's 100% of the time. Somebody gets cheated on. And it's like, can we just do a different thing already? Like, I'm just sick of the cheating, you know? I don't know. I don't. I I literally cannot. I'm like, I guess there's been cheating. I, I have. So here's the thing. I really get your energy because I, too, get furious about things that no one else seems to be furious about. <laughs> it's just like, well, I maybe because I've been watching so many things, too. It's just like yeah. every time there's a romantic story that's a straight couple, there's always, there's always cheating. And I'm just like, can we just do a different thing? Ay, ay, ay. I, I tell you what, there story. is a buttload of cheating in straight couples, though. Sure, but do you think <laughs> that one begets the other? Like, <laughs> no, no, I'm just, I'm just I mean, talking. Like, I'm not trying so, to justify. Because it's so overrepresented in film, do you think that that makes people think it's more okay? As in, like, does it, will it have, like... Does it normalize it to an cultural, extent? Cultural, yeah. Yeah. Uh, normalize. Um, <laughs> I know. <laughs> Sorry to use a trigger word. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I mean... Just something to think about. Doesn't necessarily need to be answered. <laughs> I don't think so. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> so we haven't talked about the old man yet. Yeah. The old men in the two different movies were two different guys. I mean, they were not... <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> very hardly the same guy. Yeah. The old man in the remake is like in his 70s. And I think an he. An old man. He's like an old man. And yeah. he works with them or is like somehow also involved in a road crew or something because he's driving a company vehicle, even though he's yeah. always driving around with alcohol <laughs> and cigars. <laughs> Hell, 80s, baby. My man's ready to there party. There weren't laws yet. Ooh, especially in Texas. You know, like every state has different laws about liquor in your vehicle like uh, in mississippi yeah. i think it just has to be like out of reach of the driver but you can have alcohol all over the car and people can be open <laughs> containers in the back seat it just has <laughs> to be out of reach <laughs> yeah something like that so who knows what the fuck the laws are in yeah <laughs> deep <yeah>. texas <laughs> in the original the man is like 40 he's not old at all really yeah and he opens beers with his teeth, which yeah. was interesting. <laughs> He's much more of like a hard ass, gritty, like I've been out driving my truck kind of guy. And he doesn't work with them, I don't think. No. He's just kind of around. <laughs> I was more afraid of the Icelandic guy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he, he seems more like if you don't take his alcohol, you know, a knife might come out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he seemed real sketchy. The moment he like, it's a re it was a really small thing that j I was just like, stop. He was like, oh, just two guys, two handsome guys out here with no pussy, huh? And he like throws his arm around the neck of the younger guy and just kind of mm -hmm. gives him a noogie. And I was like, oh, fuck. He's like, this is going to go bad. <laughs> like, this is going to get creepy. Just some backwoods fella. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he was really... Yeah, the older guy, like, yeah, I'll take your soda, Grandpa. Yeah. The other guy, I'm like, what's in that bottle of Coca-Cola that you just bit open? <laughs> he has moonshine that seems like homemade moonshine. The bottles yeah. that they get from the old man in the remake, the actual old man, I don't think we'd know exactly what they are, but they have labels clearly scraped off of them and then written on a piece of masking tape <laughs> taped. taped to them. <laughs> was yeah. the word wine. So I love that. Yep. <laughs> Which one is more on sketchy? <laughs> <laughs> they both seem pretty dodgy to me. <laughs> dodgy yeah, bottles yeah. of liquid. One thing I did like that the the man in the original did was that he took a piss while he's talking to the young boy telling him not to sleep with the same woman more than 3 times in a row. He just starts taking a piss on the side of the road. And I just kind of liked yeah. that little that little touch. Kayla likes pee. Well, I just thought it like added something to his character. <laughs> and it was kind of fun. It, add, it does add something. Also, I mean, am I jealous that you can just stop on the side of the road and do a little pee? Tuck it back in? A little. It, 
It rocks. <laughs> so next is when the boys cannot stop physically fighting with each other. I love this. What was the instigating incident here? Uh. Oh, I remember. The younger yeah. boy was going to go on strike, right? Yeah. That- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He yeah, was he's going on strike. On strike. Just... I liked the little flicking each other off going on. That was cute. I liked I liked the flex. It's in the trailer. Yes, the flex. Uh-huh. But at some point it turns into a physical altercation and the young boy goes chasing after Paul Rudd. I think he just says yeah. I could whoop your ass, basically. <laughs> That's why the flex comes into play. Because uh, yeah, they're yeah. debating over who could whoop whose ass. That's a great debate to have at any time. <laughs> with any with anyone. <laughs> I was a little scared when he was running through the woods, too. I was pretty sure he was going to run into a tree. That seemed so dodgy. He kept looking behind him while running. Woo. Oh, God. I was so just, worried. We've both seen too many, I mean, you more than I, you've seen too many horror movies. <laughs> that yeah. always happens. I could be, could have been played for laughs in this one if they wanted. Anyway, he doesn't run into a tree. <laughs> <laughs> in the original, there is no physical altercation. He just, the young boy, dumps the wheelbarrow and drives off in the car, leaving the older man to kind of frustratingly try and do the job himself and end up breaking a pole and having a cry. And I felt like that was a lot more emotionally authentic to what he would be going through at that time, having just been dumped from his girlfriend, trying not to be emotional about it, but actually being really emotional about it, whereas... Paul Rudd's version where he's just being goofy and flexing and then like, hoo, 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 you can't beat me. Like that just doesn't seem like where's the emotional weight for him, you know, when we know how devastating this is to him. Mm-hmm. I really liked how they did it in the original a lot better. And Hell the yeah. physical fighting, like, I mean, I just feel like people don't act that way. It just doesn't seem true to me. It doesn't seem authentic. Sure. Uh, it was fun to me. I was smiling. (laughs) Maybe it was fun. Like two boys having fun. You you love nothing more. But if we're going to talk about the authenticity or the the groundedness of it all, I feel like the original was more successful in this area and most (laughs) of the areas. (laughs) Sure. Whatever. Mm -hmm. Even just there's some point where in each movie, the older man takes like rips a comic out of the younger man's hand and starts kind of hitting him with the comic because he's mad. Mm -hmm. In the original, when he takes the comic from the young boy's hand, it rips a page off, and that's what causes him to be angry enough to smack the boy with the comic. Yeah, yeah. And in the remake, nothing rips, so then him smacking the boy with the comic seems like kind of overblown. Like, why is this even happening? Even just small details like that. Yeah, but (laughs) the, the tear is good, yeah. But yeah, didn't bother me. They, they didn't have it. And then the way they handle the resolution to their the resolution to their conflict with each other is handled differently in each film as well. So mm-hmm. in the remake, Paul Rudd, when he's running away, jumps off of a cliff and <laughs> lands into <laughs> lands in a creek and messes up his hip and then has to call for help. In the original, I liked it. It's later on, he's fishing, and the fish somehow pulls him into the water, causing him to nearly drown, where he has to call for help. The end result is that they're both in water and need help from the younger boy, who has to come and save them. But it felt a little more serious in the original, because that man was going to die. You know, he was drowning. Whereas Paul Rudd was just laying on the ground with a bruised hip. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, The difference for me was, at this point, I was... With the Icelandic version, I'm going like, please, just drown. Just end the movie <laughs> for a little bit. With, with the other one, I'm like, ah, Paul Rudd, jumping pit, and he's like, what a scamp. He's, you know, <laughs> he's really going through it. What a fun t- what romp. Yeah. Just having fun. That's it. <laughs> yeah, just a lot more silly of a, yeah, of a absolutely. movie overall. The whole tone of it is a lot more silly. Yeah. That's and that worked for me. I wanted mm-hmm. a little levity. I think what I struggled with with the uh, Icelandic version is it is more stoic and more dry. It's just a different type of movie. <laughs> for a movie that is ultimately about finding solace in 
unfortunate circumstance or just the circumstances you're dealt this is about to, to, at least to me i read it very much as like this is what happens this is who you confide in and ultimately be, you know befriend because you hit this boiling point where you have to you know you can't do everything alone mm-hmm. and at least for me i think that's a very beautiful joyous happy thing that's really a great wonderful thing it, that i think can be silly and fun and i really felt it lacking with the with the icelandic version i really felt that need for camaraderie and i and i could see that it was happening but i i just struggled to feel the same as at all mm. as i did with prince avalanche yeah is what it okay. is yeah after they're friends again they get drunk and go painting the road all crazy in yeah. the remake they paint a full like body outline <laughs> Onto the road. Yeah. And throw all of their tools in a ditch. Classic dumb drunk guy stuff. Yeah. I feel like it's also a major crime. <laughs> Isn't that like uh, destroying government property? <laughs> what have I... S- I've said this many times. I can't believe... <laughs> all right. Everyone, get out your notebooks. Write it again. Crimes <laughs> are fine. <laughs> this podcast is pro-crime, but... Yeah. I mean, they dump all of their stuff into this ditch all yeah, of the supplies really they need stupid. for the road. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure that's like a felony. <laughs> I just, I thought it was a funny scene. Like, I really feel like a lot of uh, David Allen Green. Is that his name? David Gordon Green. <laughs> Gordon Green. Close. Uh, I feel like a lot of choices he makes, big choices he makes, are done just because he asks himself the question, what's kind of fun what's kind of mm-hmm. funny what's kind of that i thought it was funny and you said it with the mario like mm-hmm. and i that shot of like all the tools just going in the pit is just like wouldn't it be funny if we if we did this and <laughs> then filmed it like stupid okay <laughs> just goofball shit yeah and after that they're friends and they're gonna hang out together the next weekend it, they're doing Go different things in each movie. In the remake, it's a beauty pageant. In the original, it's an outdoor festival. Either way, they're going to go hang out. Outdoor festival felt more realistic yeah. and authentic. Yeah. Beauty pageant felt funnier, <laughs> at least to me. Like, sure. that's stupid. What the fuck are you doing there? Yeah. Also, at some point, the younger boy tells the older boy that he got a woman pregnant and Mm -hmm. is going to make her take care of it on her own or get an abortion. And I also felt like the reasoning behind what was going on in the original held a lot more weight than what they did with it in the remake, too. I definitely agree with you. Yeah. Yeah. Because in the original, the girl that he got pregnant had like a birth defect. She wasn't supposed to be able to get pregnant. And so then that puts more weight on... If he asks her to get an abortion, she might never get pregnant again. So it just has a lot more weight. And in the remake, it's just a 47-year-old woman. And they're like, haha, it's funny. She's old and shouldn't (laughs) get pregnant. I mean, overall, I I don't know if I said this. I really should have pushed it more. I liked the young guy a lot more than I liked Emile Hirsch. I really did like Emile Hirsch all right in this. Mm -hmm. But I really felt... Um, cause that was like really one of the first times that he's vulnerable or yeah. like a, is willingly vulnerable and like seeking a lot of it, seeking sincere advice. Uh, mm-hmm. and it's a really, yeah, it's done really well in the Icelandic version. I really felt like both of the characters were just a lot more grounded. The acting was a lot more grounded in the, in mm-hmm. the original than in the remake. Okay. We're almost to the end. So the basically last One of the last things that happens is they see the woman walking down the road. So in Mm -hmm. the original, because we didn't get that montage scene with the older man's character, this is the first time that we've seen this woman. Well, the young man saw her get out of the truck earlier, but we didn't like know who she was or anything. And in the remake, we know who she is because Paul Rudd talked to her earlier. (laughs) Either way, she won't respond to them. And then she gets in the old man's truck. Mm -hmm. In the original, her getting in the truck is not addressed at all. She just doesn't speak to them and then gets in the truck. And he's like, all right, see you later, boys. In the remake, the old man gaslights them and says that there is no woman. If there was a woman in my truck, I would know. And there's no woman in here. 
Um, <laughs> and that leaves it to more of like, what is the deal with this woman? Is she a ghost? What's her? <laughs> yeah, it's it's real stupid. What's like her deal? <laughs> I did think the. Uh, <laughs> Is this a sentence I'm about to say? I did think the gaslighting was funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it lying. was. I mean, yeah. it was silly. <laughs> yeah. It's more than lying. He's telling them what's real is not real. <laughs> That's gaslighting. But I don't know. It was funny. Whatever. So she might be a ghost. We don't really know. And then we roll crits. <laughs> Boom. Loved it. And at the end of the credits is the boys singing. They improv that song together. Uh, it's total improv, just the two actors doing their thing. So mm-hmm. just kind of fun. And that's it. That's end of creds. Roll creds. All right. Will you give this out of five? I really enjoyed it. It gets three and a half for me. Or should we score both? Sure. Okay. I, I'm kind of brutal in the Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. I give either way two and a half. I didn't love it. Like okay. I, I liked the story. I liked the setting. I just didn't feel it very empathetic uh, as I did with Prince Avalanche. Like, either way, I got it. I really did see a lot of what they were trying to do, and I thought that it was good. Like, I I saw the bones of a movie that I think could be really good, but it didn't have the warmth uh, that I I then kind of received. That's all it is. Okay. I I liked the characters in in the Icelandic movie. Okay. Did... You said how many stars you said, right? Oh, two and a half for either way, three and a half for Prince Avalanche, yeah. Okay, all right, my turn? Yeah, go off. Okay, well, I mean, I pretty much said what I felt about either movie throughout the discussion, mm-hmm. so overall, I liked either way a lot better. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> so we're kind of opposites on this one, but... Yeah. Um, I mean, they are just kind of different films, really. Like I said, even though a lot of the dialogue was the same, even line for line, even shot for shot, sort of, to an extent, Mm -hmm. the whole, like, atmosphere, the mood, the tone, like, all of that was so different between the two movies. And I felt like either way was a lot more my vibe, and I just liked it more. I don't know. Uh, And, like I said, felt more grounded to me, so... I'm going to give either way a four, Mm -hmm. and I'm going to give Prince Avalanche. I think if I had seen Prince Avalanche without seeing either way, I might might like it a little more. That totally makes sense. Yeah. So now you saw like a, what you see. I've seen a better better version. version. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe I'll, I'll still be nice. I'll give it a three, I think. You think so? Right. Yeah. I mean, there were things that I... I'm torn between a two and a half and a three, but I think yeah. two and a half just feels low to me. Sure. Yeah. I don't know. All so right. I'm just going to say three. <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, three for Prince Avalanche, four for either way from me. Okay. That's what I think. And would we recommend cool. these movies? Uh, Yeah. You know, uh, fuck it. It's a three star movie. Yeah. <laughs> two and a half is low. Yeah, three stars. <laughs> I was thinking about that too. Um, so yeah, three it, because I think it does tell the story a little better. Mm-hmm. It, like it just conveys like the f- details better. Uh, so when you go into Prince Avalanche and there's a little, there's not I don't think as much helpful like moving forward exposition or like even just like small details exposition wise. And I would definitely say watch both of them. I would say yeah. obviously I liked. The original better so i want to recommend that yeah. over the other one but it doesn't really matter <laughs> yeah so that's what we think watch the movies <laughs> yep. now it's time for screen profit okay um in this part of the pod we go off about whatever else we've been watching so kali what you been watching you know what? I had another freaking video game heavy week. So I'm okay. sorry. I've only got a couple. Okay. Um, so I watched Bad Trip, uh, mm. the new Eric Andre flick. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And it's just, it's great. It's very fun. There, Don't it's, spill too like, many beans. <laughs> I'm not going to spoil anything. It's really okay. just like a lot of fun gags. Yeah. Like, that's it. That's the movie. Like, not going to change your life, <laughs> but you're going to have a fun need? time watching <laughs> Yeah, time like exactly. 
It's yeah. great to have a good time. Um, I checked out one of your favorite movies. Okay. Angst. Hell yeah. Uh, Another wow. character study. <laughs> uh, yeah, it is. Yeah. And it was... I There were times that I was, like, glued to the screen and, like, holy shit, this is so in- intense. But that, yeah. that music is so nice. And I got really sleepy. I watched, but I no! really liked it. <laughs> but I even got was sleepy. No, it was good, though. I really like Angst. Mm-hmm. Oh, great. One of my fave things is the cinematography of that film. I just thought was so... The shots are nuts. In- incredible. Just outstanding. Oh, my, it's the- fucking crazy. And, like, if you look into it, I may have said this even when I talked about it on pod, but, like, if you look into what... The cinematographer is Zbigniew Rybczynski. If you look into the like methods that he used to achieve his shots in that film, there's all like he invented all these crazy rigs and mirrors and cameras hanging off of ropes type shit. Like, yeah, it's fucking crazy. He's so cool. I'm obsessed. (laughs) Yeah. The way everything's delivered. So, yeah. So nuts. It's so unique of a film. Yeah. Agreed. Let's see. Then I watched. All right, this is this is a weird one that comes out of. I watched. Oh, what uh, else is new? Open Water Two: Adrift. What even is that? I don't even think I've heard of that. So, do you remember the movie Open Water? Well, no. <laughs> okay. Well, it was a movie that came out in two thousand and three, and that the whole thing is it's just two people get left behind on a scuba trip in the middle of the ocean, and they're like stuck. Okay. Just they got life vests. But they're just stuck. And oh, there's some sharks too. Sure. So it's just a crummy horror movie. But I tell you what, the more I have set with Open Water 2 <laughs> adrift, the it more sounds like I, your shit. I like it. <laughs> it. Okay, first off, it had some of the, like, the line reads, the lines themselves are insane. Like, yeah. unhinged, off the wall, written by a robot. <laughs> the lead lady just... All her lines are 80 yard and she's yelling them. <laughs> she's just one, like, a, a, always a bit, like higher than someone else. Yeah. And then, you know what? To top it all off, the main premise of the movie is pretty good, I think. They're all, oh, it's like goodness. six people on a yacht <laughs> and mm. one of them has a baby. And the baby mm, stakes. It gets left aboard and all six of them end up off board with no ladder and no way to get onto the yacht. Mm, rich people problems. <laughs> well, yeah, but also, like, what if you couldn't get back on a boat? <laughs> also, it turns... No spoiler alerts for open water to adrift here, but turns out the boat was stolen all along. Oh, okay. So criminal yeah. problem. That's... Yeah, I like you. I like you. <laughs> <laughs> it's... Okay. Is it dumb? Yes. Is it worth watching? Probably not. I loved it. It was outstanding. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> that's what I that's really it. That's all I've been watching. Damn, that's it. Okay. I've been playing a lot of a lot of No Man's Sky and listening to music. All right. Well, yeah. all right. So I I got a full 5. First, I want to mention this movie On the Rocks, which is a super indie directed by Alex Kavitsky and Ariel Gardner who mm-hmm. have a ton of shorts I may have mentioned on pod before. Um so this was their feature On the Rocks and yeah. I loved it. It was so good especially for being i mean not that i need to like quantify it with this but like just double especially for being like a micro budget like super independent film it was so well done it's maybe one of the most grounded capturings of just like the entire feeling of stress and being overwhelmed and being poor (laughs) like Mm -hmm. at the same time that i've seen i think I mean, a lot of times when you watch movies that are stressful, it's just like, how many like stressful situations can we put somebody in? But like, it, you don't feel it as much, you know? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I just felt like this was such a grounded capturing of that. And the acting was fucking so good. And also, one thing I really love about all of Alex's work is uh, he has such a smart sense of humor, like genius mm. level funny. And mm-hmm. um some of that was in this movie as well. This movie is actually not really available, although if anybody wants to watch it, we can maybe uh, hook you up with a link. 
or hit up Alex or Ariel for a link. But it was really good, and I would like for more people to watch it. Hell yeah. And watch all their stuff. They're good. Good filmmakers. So secondly, I watched Deer Skin, which is a Quentin DePue movie who... I think me and you talked about this separately, but Mm -hmm. this is the same guy who did Rubber and Wrong, which I've talked about on pod. So Deerskin is like a movie about a guy who finds a jacket that starts talking to him. And let's just say it goes off the rails from there on a scale of Quentin DePue movies. So when I saw Wrong, which came out in like 2012 or something like that, but I just watched it a few months ago, Mm -hmm. I loved that movie and i think my favorite thing about it is how insanely like creative and absurd and surreal everything that happens in that movie is it's so over the top with all that stuff and just so fun and Mm -hmm. everything else i've watched from him that's come out since that just doesn't go as far as that movie did and in that way i kind of feel like they've all been a little bit of letdowns so I think if I hadn't seen that movie that I might think Deerskin was better, but just knowing what he's capable of, I feel like it kind of was just like fine, it's like a fine film. Yeah. I also feel like the action doesn't really start until kind of too late in the movie, and then you just get like a little bit of action before it's over. So I guess that's what I thought about Deerskin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know if I can recommend it, but I will recommend Wrong, which is free on YouTube. Thirdly. So I spent a lot of this weekend alone watching very, like, experimental, depressing, fucked up shit. So (laughs) this one included, I watched The Seventh Continent by, it's a Michael Haneke film, who's the same guy that did uh, Funny Games. Okay. Uh, It is a slow burn, for sure. Kind of the epitome of a living with the characters type movie almost in real time (laughs) at points it feels like but i thought that uh it's really cool it just kind of feels a little long it feels a little Mm -hmm. it feels a little drawn out at some points but uh it is sort of an anti-film in a lot of ways like i think it kind of defies everything you expect from a normal movie (laughs) hell yeah in a lot of ways and i think that's pretty sick and i also think that the way they frame things and the way that they tell their story in this film is quite interesting. And the story itself is quite interesting, too. Mm -hmm. Uh, And it obviously is fucked up. (laughs) Yeah. I'd say worth a watch. Yeah, there's some really cool stuff about it. Okay, so then I I got two more. (laughs) I feel like I'm talking forever. Keep going. No. (laughs) All right, I watched a shorter film. I think this was like a 40-minute film called You Are Not I by Sarah Driver. This one was co-written, lensed, and produced by Jim Jarmusch. I think him and Sarah Driver were like partners. Like I think they dated or something and they made Mm -hmm. some stuff together. So this was one of the things they made together. It's like a no wave film, I think from the early 80s. It's all vibes. This movie did give me a actual nightmare. (laughs) Yeah. It's about a girl who escapes from a mental institution. Just at the same time, a car accident happens nearby, and she gets mistaken by rescue workers as a car accident victim who's in shock and taken Mm -hmm. back to her house, and uh, chaos ensues. (laughs) I guess, but it's very super vibes. And the actress, I don't know what her name is, but the actress who's in that is really good. She looks so cool. Gave me a nightmare. You are not I. That's always good. All right. And lastly, I watched Boogie Nights for the first time all the way through. Oh, seriously? Yeah. Have, I you've love seen, Boogie right? Nights. Yeah. Yeah. I figured you'd Boogie probably seen it. I feel like it's one of those movies I probably caught a little bit here or there, like on TV or something before. Sure, sure. But I'd never, like, it's quite long. I mean, it's almost three hours. Yeah, yeah. It is very long. It goes a lot of plate. It's like two. Oh, it goes all over. So. They yeah. fucking. I, one thing that's incredible is this is a. It's Paul Thomas Anderson, right? Yep. Probably can be said for most of his movies. As something I think that's incredible that he does is really like you live the full storyline of like every character. <laughs> yep. Every character is so fully real. Like, yeah, they're there and you know a lot about them. Yeah. And you get like timelines, storylines, plot lines with every character. And this movie mm-hmm. full of characters. And it's, I mean, stunt casted too. There's yeah. how many celebs, you know? Yeah. And it's, you know, 
done really well the way it's shot and everything there's a lot of really cool shots and then obviously you see hog at the end which i thought you would probably love um (laughs) mark Wahlberg in that role too is so funny i wondered if that role kind of defined his personality (laughs) it it, if you watch it today it you could almost argue it's like yeah it's like his comedy like the same thing he does in the comedy movies he does oh it's for sure and I, i miss comedy mark Wahlberg. he doesn't do well does he anymore he did the daddy's home stuff which i've seen bits and pieces of at the yeah, shelter it's i've only seen great. bits and pieces i i don't know i was thinking even daddy's home he's more he's more the straight man like he's more he's supposed to be like the badass guy in daddy's yeah, home, yeah, right? yeah 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 i was thinking I think so. like his his role in boogie nights reminded me of his role in i heart huckabee's He's just like a lot more silly, like, you know, airheaded character. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I I like when he's silly like that. Yeah. Yeah. But he just doesn't do it that often. He likes to be bad boy. Uh, I mean, he is canceled, though, I think. But (laughs) what? No, he stopped 9 11. Well, theoretically. (laughs) He's like punched somebody in the face and stuff. Didn't he use the N word or something? He's from Boston. He's from Boston. I don't That's know. your answer to both I think of those he's questions. Canceled. Anyway, is do you think the hog is that his real hog or fake? It's fake. Okay. I didn't look yeah. it up, but I was curious. <laughs> I'm like ninety I don't have like a an exact citation on it, but like yeah, I'm like ninety percent sure it's fake. Yeah. That was a great build up to a reveal though. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Spending yeah. three hours building up how how big his hog is just to show it at the <laughs> fair, the last frames of the movie. <laughs> Uh, incredible. So yeah, that's all I've watched. All right, you can find us on Instagram and everywhere else at Screen Vomit. One word on all the things. Subscribe if you haven't already, and please leave us a rating and review. That's very nice for you to do that, please. And you can also send us an email at Screen Vomit Pod at gmail.com with your thoughts on these movies, other movies, suggest movies, hit us up for links for movies. <laughs> mm-hmm. And Kali, what you got? Hey, if you want to hear me talk about labor and unions, and especially right now with everything going on with the Amazon labor union, bada bing, bada boom, I got a podcast with an episode about that called How to Fire Your Boss, Baby. It's up on all the stuff. All right, and that's How to Fire Your Boss, Not the Boss Baby. <laughs> How to fire your boss. <laughs> Period. <laughs> Comma, baby. <laughs> baby. And next week, we will be watching I Don't Feel at Home in This World Anymore, which is such a mouthful of a title. That is available on Netflix, so that's easy for everyone. It's got Elijah Wood. We all love. So check that movie out, and uh, we'll see you then. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. I'm a boy lover, what can I say?